This episode is brought to you by Brilliant.org. It was just about this time that things were beginning to happen. It began like this. Hey everyone, I'm Jess Keating and you're watching Animal Logic Second Nature. The animal world is absolutely full of fascinating survival strategies. Some are novel, some are strange, and some are just plain ineffective. Yet for the ultimate strategy, these animals had to look within, to their vomit. These pukers spit saliva, cud, acid, bile, and venom at their attackers as a defense mechanism, and one of them uses spit as an attack. Hands down, the most badass spitters out there are these spitting cobras. Unlike most other spitters who essentially target their attackers with projectile vomit, spitting cobras straight up shoot venom. There are 18 spitting cobra species in the Naja genus, as well as a false spitting cobra called the Rinkha, and they're all found in Asia and Africa. These snakes spit venom as a defense mechanism when they're cornered. In front of their fangs, they have two little holes from which they shoot their venom targeting their attacker's weakest point. When they spit, they jerk their heads forward, aiming their shot towards the predator's eyes. In a study evaluating what happened to the eyes of nine patients spat at by a black neck spitting cobra, two of the patients were permanently blinded, while the others suffered more temporary issues like inflammation. Their venom is cytotoxic, which means it destroys the cells that it touches. Spitting cobras in general can spit accurately from up to two meters away, but the Mozambique spitting cobra is the most accurate and can hit targets with 100% accuracy from up to three meters away. The effects of this venomous spit can be devastating to attackers, yet just looking at these guys, you know they're gonna be bad news. But on the other hand, perhaps the most deadly incognito spitter is the Northern Fulmar. The sight of birds soaring through the firmament is a marvel to behold and suggests that joy may be realized merely through observing the natural that is forever present. These seabirds are from the petrel family and they projectile vomit onto predators to make them lose their waterproof coating. But it's a lot more sinister than it sounds. Living on the coasts, their predators are usually other larger seabirds. These predatory seabirds need to have waterproof wings in order to fly. Northern fulmars have developed the ability to vomit up stomach oils, which can destroy the waterproofing on these attacking seabirds. The oil has a similar effect to birds coming in contact with petroleum spills. The stomach oils will gunk up their feathers, sticking them together. Even after the seabirds preen and bathe in clean water, they're not able to get their feathers dry. They become waterlogged, exhausted trying to stay afloat, and ultimately, they drown. Northern fulmars can accurately hit targets up to two meters away. Both adults and chicks can spit oil, but amazingly, even unhatched babies can spit oil through a small hole in the egg. This is a very special kind of egg. It's a nest egg. European roller chicks also employ vomit as a defense, though not nearly as mercilessly. If a predator draws near, they spew super stinky orange vomit. They don't target the predators though, and the vomit is meant to make the nest smell horrible, causing the predator to lose its appetite. What's particularly interesting though, is that the chicks don't produce the chemicals that make their vomit so stinky. They get that from grasshoppers. As green as the leaves he's found on, with the six jointed legs all insects have. Grasshoppers get hydroxycinnamic and hydroxybenzoic acids from the plants that they eat. This is supposed to make them taste bad, but the European rollers really don't care. Interestingly enough, like many insects, the grasshoppers that the rollers eat also vomit when disturbed. When the rollers eat the grasshoppers, they get those same acids in their stomachs. These produce horrific smells that are highly effective at deterring predators. 
Turkey vultures also employ a similar strategy. The turkey vulture is a scavenger, feeding mainly on decaying flesh. It is often seen circling high in the sky above a carcass. Their stomach acid is a hundred times more acidic than her own, and in fact is even more acidic than car battery acid. You really don't want to be on the receiving end of turkey vulture vomit. There is some speculation as to the reason why turkey vultures throw up when threatened. It's possible that they're doing it in defense, but it's equally likely that they are simply making themselves lighter so that they can make a speedy getaway. Spitting is not only used in defense, but also to show dominance. Camels and llamas use spit as a core component in their pecking order, which for camelids should really be called spitting order. Camelids will spit to demonstrate dominance over one another, as well as to let you know if you're invading their personal space. They will also spit at one another when they're fighting, and like many other spitters, they spit when threatened. Their spit is a combination of saliva and food that they've partially digested. So if a camel spits on you, it's more like it's puking on you. <laughs> the ultimate spitter, however, uses its range offensively, the archerfish. Oh, who? This is the famous archerfish of the Malay Ocean, Toxotes yaculatoi. These fish are the only spitters that spit to hunt. They swim near the surface looking for insects perched in the branches and leaves above them. When they spot their prey, the archerfish pokes its mouth out of the water and shoots a blast of water at the insect, knocking it off its perch and down into the water where the archerfish devours it. They can accurately shoot down bugs, butterflies, and spiders from up to three meters away. The physics behind their shots is pretty interesting. On its side, because the way it isn't a fish, it looks like a bow tie there. To shoot the water, they make a little tube shape with their mouth and tongue, and then they contract their gills to push out the water. But they've mastered the ability to the point that the top and bottom of the water stream move at slightly different speeds. So instead of being hit with a steady stream of water, all of that water arrives and hits the target at the same time. It will be akin to being hit with a water balloon rather than the stream of water from a water gun. This blast of water is really effective at knocking down prey, and it also makes the archerfish worthy of its name. If you want to master the act of hitting targets just like archerfish, you should check out a course called Outside the Box Geometry on Brilliant.org, who sponsored this episode. This course makes geometry fun. Imagine mastering the art of playing pool in just five minutes a day. In this daily challenger, you'll learn the context and the framework of how to take that perfect shot at the pool table. This course deals with polyaminos, tessellations, origami folding, art gallery problems, and takes you through the magic of geometry, all to score that sweet trick shot. Brilliant has a lot of math, science, and computer science daily challenges like this one, which are really quick, fun, thought-provoking, and many relate to your everyday life. Brilliant has been my companion for honing my math and physics skills, and I've actually started to enjoy something I once found so difficult. They explain theories in an interactive way, and because I love challenging myself, I take on their daily challengers to master new skills every day. If you want to support Animal Logic and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash animalogic and sign up for free. The first 200 people that go to this link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So what should we talk about next? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic Second Nature every other week. Thanks so much for watching.